Good morning, Montclair. This is the morning bus here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. I am joined by JT Bethia, Tanner Price, and Lana Kapodakis. We don't have Leslie today, but, you know, she's coming back from Los Angeles and she's a little jet lag. So I'm giving her a little extra day of rest. So you can get back together with the, you know, the time, you know, daylight savings just happened. Or, you know, you know, she's getting, she's getting back in the groove. But for now, we got each other. I'm Victor Mies Rosa. So the morning bus, uh, you know, happy national napping day. You know, this day is celebrated right after we change our clocks once again because of daylight savings. We have less sleeping hours, so we need that extra sleep. Am I right? You know, especially here at the morning bus. Ah, so. We got news. So, Lana, take it away. That we do. And uh, I'm going to be celebrating a happy National Napping Day right after this show. Perfect. <laughs> In national news, eight people are dead after two smuggling boats capsized off the coast of San Diego. Authorities received a call from a woman Saturday night who was on one of the boats reporting the other boat had capsized. The capsizing is believed to be caused by rough waters and intense fog. The Coast Guard and Fire Rescue have found eight bodies and are continuing their search. In state news, a Monmouth County small business is closing after 120 years of operation. Becker Hardware and Colts Neck has been in the town for 52 years of their 120 years of business. Quote, closing the store was a very difficult decision for the entire family. We leave the business with a great warmth and appreciation for the many employees that have worked over here over the years as well as our suppliers and everyone else who had walked through our doors. End quote, says Art Baker, the owner. The store's last day is March 17th. And in local news, a man from Newark was found stabbed in a parking garage. 31-year-old Jabari M. Mans a. Manson was found dead in the garage Friday morning. Police are still investigating and no suspects have been currently released. As for the weather today, it is currently 38 degrees and cloudy with a high of 45 and a low of 37 with a high chance of rain throughout the day. Humidity is at 90% with good air quality at 31. Mm, thank you so much, Lana, for that news update. The weather's going to be so bad today. Like, I'm not excited for that. But what I am excited for is sports. So, Tanner Price, yeah. take it away with the sports cast. I will. So, over the weekend, the Bears sent the first overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft to the Carolina Panthers in exchange for pick number nine this year, pick number 61, a 2024 first-round pick, and a 2024 second-round pick, as well as star receiver DJ Moore. The day I have dreaded for the last couple of weeks is upon us. Jalen Ramsey has been traded. <laughs> the Rams traded Ramsey, six-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro and Super Bowl 56 champ to the Miami Dolphins for a third-round pick and tight end Hunter Long. This is after the Rams have cut linebacker Bobby Wagner and Leonard Floyd. The Rangers lost 3-2 in overtime to the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first of three matchups with Pittsburgh this week. The Devils with a huge win over the Hurricanes, winning 3-0. The Devils and Hurricanes now tied in points atop the Metro Division. In yesterday's World Baseball Classic action, Japan beat Australia 7-1, Italy beat the Netherlands 7-1, Israel beat Nicaragua 3-1, Canada beat Great Britain 18-8, Venezuela beat Puerto Rico 9-6. We don't talk about that. Australia beat the Czech Republic uh, 8-3, and the U.S. lost to Mexico 11-5. Today's games are Korea versus China, which is on right now. Um, I believe... Korea has a 4-2 to two lead. Dominican Republic versus Nicaragua at noon. Colombia, Great Britain at 3. Israel versus Puerto Rico at 7. And Canada versus USA at 10. The Knicks defeated the Lakers by a score of 112-108. to 108. RJ Barrett and Julius Randle both put up 30 in the Knicks win. The Nets defeated the Nuggets 122-120. to 120. Unlike the Knicks, the Nets got scoring from everywhere with 8 players putting up 10 points or more. The NCAA... Men's basketball tournament bracket was released yesterday. Rutgers has missed the tournament, being the second team out. The second team not chosen. The tournament begins tomorrow with the first four. Mm, thank you so much, Tanner. And I got to say, you know, I'm devastated. A Puerto Rico lost yesterday versus Venezuela. We had a big game today. It was, but they have Israel. Yeah, Israel today. You know, they won. Um, not Guatemala. They won versus uh, Nicaragua, 9-1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I'm excited for Puerto Rico to make a comeback tomorrow. Yeah. Well, today. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm excited for my, my team, Puerto Rico. But before we get into the top news, I got to say, we're going to talk about the Oscars. We're going to talk about 
a storm that is coming in New Jersey and Northern Jersey. And we're also going to talk about Joe Biden potentially prohibiting oil and gas leasing in the Arctic Ocean. So let's just start with the news. And a winter storm hits Northern Jersey. A storm will affect parts of Northern Jersey until Tuesday and could have as much as eight inches of snow in northwestern sections of the Garden State, which includes Sussex and Passaic counties. Jersey will also be hit with lighter snow and heavy rain throughout the state. The storm watch is active now and will be until Tuesday in Passaic County. Right now, Montclair is likely to be hit with heavy rain, and I'm not excited about that. I got to be real. But, you know, it's, it's all part of nature. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we got to We need the rain. Oh, so I love, love how my county is in the six to eight inches. Oh, <laughs> you don't have to go back home, right? Or do you? Well, I was planning to go back home this weekend, but. Well, maybe it will be gone by then. You know, it's, it's the, the start hope. of the week. If you're going to the end of the week, one maybe can <laughs> one can hope. Well, eight inches is a lot. So <laughs> I'm I'm praying for you, Lana. I'm praying for Thanks. you. Thanks. So we'll see what happens with this storm. And hopefully we don't get hit by snow, which is highly unlikely. But, you know, you never know what's going to happen with the weather. We're just predicting right here. I have seen so many times of we're getting uh, 10 inches of snow today. I wake up and... They, that only helped me once because it was my birthday and they said we were getting eight inches so they canceled school and, mm, nice. my birthday and then you had no a great snow. time there was no snow so i could do whatever i want so. <laughs> hey maybe we'll have that luck but we'll see for now hey. we got more news jt is my co-host for now so uh, jt take up, it away what's up, what's up? i'm back in we're talking about joe biden and oil and gas products in the arctic ocean um but Joe Biden administration officials said the presidents will announce a prohibition on oil and gas le- leasing in the United States territories in the Arctic Ocean. This comes after Biden's trip to San Diego, California. Biden plans to protect 13 million acres in the National Petroleum Reserve in Alaska from oil and gas leasing places like Teshekpuk Lake, Utacock Uplands, Colville River. K. K. Salik, I put the pronunciations in here, Lagoon, and Peard Bay in special areas. The administration hopes that this will create a firewall that will stop gas expansion across federal lands and waters in the U.S. territories in the Arctic Ocean. Biden is visiting California to discuss a nuclear submarine partnership between the U.S. and the United Kingdom and Australia. Mm. Uh, So hopefully this means cheaper gas in the future. Well, actually, no, the gas has been getting a little... Gas has been going down a little bit. I don't Mm -hmm. know if anybody else has been noticing. It's very up and down, you know. That's how gas prices go. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, this is very good because, you know, climate change and everything. And, you know, Biden has been very strong about that. And I'm glad that he's doing that. So hopefully it'll be more, uh, you know, more sustainable for our environment. And this type of projects don't happen as much. So we'll see what happens. We're going to go to a quick, 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 very quick very very quick break and we'll be right back hi we're the goo goo dolls we're fortunate that our daughters
96.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. You're listening to the Morning Bus. And hey, we got Oscar Bus coming in and out. So it's going to be great. Of course. Yes. But before we get into the Oscar Bus, we're going to, you know, I'm just teasing you right now. I'm teasing you. We're going to have a great feature in the first hour about the Oscars. But for now, we got some more news. And, you know, there's been a lot going on in Silicon Valley Bank. So the U.S. government, to help stop Silicon Valley Bank crisis, the U.S. government intervenes with the Silicon Valley Bank crisis and assures all depositors will have access to their money. This happens after banking regulators shut down Silicon Valley Bank after suffering a swift collapse, making it the second largest bank failure in history. The U.S. Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation said all SBB clients will be protected and will get their money. SBB is known for being the bank for many tech startups, venture capitalists, and tech firms who lost access to their accounts. The federal agency said in a joint statement, end quote, this step will ensure that the U.S. banking system continues to perform its vital roles of protecting deposits and providing access to credit to households and businesses in a manner that promotes strong and sustainable economic growth, end quote. So hopefully this gets resolved. You know, a lot of people are affected by this, especially tech companies that are the future of businesses nowadays. So. Mm-hmm. Hopefully this gets resolved and, you know, the, the depositors of these accounts get access to the accounts as they rightfully so need to. But we got more news and, you know, JT, take it away. This is an interesting story. So 100%. I want JT to read it. Man, I have never even heard about coconuts in New Jersey, but apparently they're protecting the Jersey Shore. Wait, am I reading the right time? No, you're not. Well, no, I'm you not. might as well. You just teased it. <laughs> so just read that story. Oh, man, I am so sorry. I had my script set at the wrong point. But you know what? Let's Go with it. Yeah, go with it. Anyway, this Jersey Shore is incorporating coconut huts to protect the shoreline. The coconuts are at a cost-effective measure to create sustainable op- options to protect the beaches and the erosion of sand in the Garden State. Coconuts are going to be added to the river bank in Neptune, New Jersey, to stop erosion in that area. Tim Dillingham from the American Littoral Society said, and quote, we're always trying to reduce wave energy while shielding the shoreline, and whenever we can, we like to employ nature-based solutions. This material is readily available, particularly in developing countries, and it's relatively inexpensive compared to harder materials, end quote. The coconut host, or known as the core, is a biodegradable solution and has the flexibility to be shaped in any form or any uneven areas. This is pretty great. You know, we, 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 you, we're starting to see how people are getting very conscious, uh, uh, environmentally conscious. So mm-hmm. I'm very excited. And I, I never heard about, you know, using coconuts to protect erosion. I didn't even think they were in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> but this is happening like in Indonesia. This is happening all around the world. And now it's getting started in mm-hmm. Jersey. So this is, this is amazing. And hey, I love going to the beach. So if the beaches are protected, I am happy. Mm-hmm. I am so happy. Coconut so flavored see. things are delicious. Oh, of course. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But we do we do have a more um a little more serious topic. The one I was supposed to read. You want me to go ahead with that one? Uh, right here. Yeah, sure. Just read yeah. that story, but also an interesting story. So yeah, it is a very interesting story, but um, nonetheless, a not so f- uh, surprising one. So the former vice president of the United States, Mike Pence, shocker, shocker, actually criticized Donald Trump for his involvement in the January 6th U.S. Capitol riots. Pence said, and quote, President Trump was wrong. I had no right to overturn the election, and his reckless words endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol that day. And I know history will hold Donald Trump accountable, end quote. Oof. Trump pressured Pence to overturn the election in the U.S. Senate. This led to the events of the rioters storming the Capitol. Many analysts speculate Pence might run for presidential candidacy against Trump, and he is only laying the groundwork for his campaign. Pence said, in quote, make no mistake about it. What happened that day was a disgrace, and it mocks decency to betray in any other way. End quote. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I don't like to agree with politicians, but I agree with Mike. You know? Honestly, I'm not surprised he did this. He was... I remember when all of that was going on, um, Trump was visibly very vocally frustrated with Mm -hmm. his vice president because he wasn't backing him up as much as he wanted him to. Yeah. And rightfully so. You know, he was saying the the election was stolen. Like, Mm -hmm. like, like, you know, I I wouldn't back this guy up. Like, come on. Democracy, man. Like, what's that's what happened. Like, what was happening? So, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. I think these elections, the 2024 elections are going to be very interesting. So we'll see what happens. 
But we got more news and we got a story of but that involves South Korea, North Korea, and the United States. U.S. and South Korea launched drills after North Korea missile test. U.S. and South Korea militaries will start their biggest military drill after North Korea launched a submarine cruise missile test. Drills include a computer simulation called Freedom Shield 23 and several field exercises. A U.S. military statement said, end quote, the field exercises are to cooperate through air, land, sea, space, cyber, and special operations and improve upon tactics, techniques, and procedures. North Korea said in state media they are launching these drills to show the power they have against the U.S. imperialists and the South Korean puppet forces. So this is kind of scary. You know, they're like testing out missiles and stuff like that. Uh, I... I'm, I don't want this to turn into another war. We don't need another war in the world. Uh, Come on. It's one thing to say that they're always testing these, but at the same time, somebody, sometimes I have this theory that they're almost playing the, um, playing the crying wolf theory, mm -hmm. where it's as if um, uh, the world just gets so used to hearing they're testing missiles, they're testing missiles, and then the one time that they feel like, okay, they're not going to take this one seriously anymore is the time that we really have to be worried about. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So we'll see what happens. And, you know, we're going to talk about the Oscars. But before we talk about the Oscars and what happened last night, it, you know, a lot of things happened last night and it oh was a great God, ceremony. So but we're going to go to a quick musical break and then we'll be right Ooh. back with what happened at the Academy Awards. Stay tuned.
90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. I am Victor Muiz Rosta, and this is the Morning Bus. And yes, this is the time, the time for the Oscars and what happened last night yes. at the Oscars. Oh. Uh, the Oscars, the most important night in film. And yes, we got a lot of things to talk about. Oh, last man. night was the Academy Awards, or commonly known as the Oscars. It was an amazing night with many takeaways, and we have some highlights for the listeners. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, Everything Everywhere All at Once was the star of the show. By taking most of the awards like Best Directing, Best Editing, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Picture. You could say it was everything everywhere all at once. Literally. Yes. Yes. <laughs> basically. Basically. So we got, you know, we got some highlights. For example, K. Hugh Kwan wins Best Supporting Actor for Everything Everywhere All at Once with a very emotional speech. Here's what he had to say about his win at the Oscars. My mom is 84 years old, and she's at home watching. Mom, I just want an Oscar. My journey started on a boat. I spent a year in a refugee camp, and somehow I ended up here on Hollywood's biggest stage. They say stories like this only happen in the movies. I cannot believe it's happening to me. This, this is the American dream. And that was K. Hugh Kwan for his best supporting actor role, you know, uh, win. So congratulations to him. You know, very emotional. And that's true, you know, dreams do come true and we got to fight for them. We also got Jamie Lee Curtis, who has been in acting for years, finally won her first Oscar win for, again, everything, everywhere, all at once. And here's what she had to say. It was a very, very great speech. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. To all of the people who have supported the genre movies that I have made for all these years, the thousands and hundreds of thousands of people, we just won an Oscar together. And my mother and my father were both nominated for Oscars in different categories. I just won an Oscar. Very emotional, very emotional. Jamie Lee Curtis wanting, winning her first Oscar after so many years. Wow, that's amazing. And then the duel behind everything, everywhere, all at once, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shainer gave a speech about the importance of having an amazing cast and his parents in their life. So this is what he had to say about it. And this is him accepting the best director, best director win. So this is what he had to say. Um, I know every director agrees with me when I say a director is nothing without their incredible cast and crew. This is my family, my friends. Um, if our movie has greatness and genius, it is only because they have greatness and genius flowing through their hearts and souls and minds, and they gave that to us, to our, uh, to, they gave that precious gift to our film. Uh, the world is opening up to the fact that uh, genius does not stem from individuals like us on stage, but rather it, genius emerges from the collective. We are all products of our context. We are all descendants of something and someone, and I want to acknowledge my context, my immigrant parents, my father who fell in love with movies because he needed to escape the world and thus passed that love of movies on to me. My mother, who is a creative soul who wanted to be an, a dancer, an actor, and singer, but could not afford the luxury of that life path and then gave it to me. My incredible brothers and sisters who s helped me survive the chaos of childhood. My friends from high school who taught me the, 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 the sorry, I'm just going to keep going. Um, and, But we're not going to let you keep going. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got, you know, Brendan Fraser again, a renaissance man who came back and had an amazing performance in The Well, won the best actor in a leading role. And it was it was amazing. I don't know if you had guys had the chance to watch The Well, but it was an amazing performance. And also Jared Tauber had the chance to talk to him. So our music director here at WMSC. So this is what Brendan Fraser had to say. Um, I thank the Academy for this honor and for our studio, A24, for making such a bold film. And... <laughs> I'm grateful to Darren Aronofsky for throwing me a creative lifeline and hauling me aboard the good ship, The Whale. It was written by Samuel D. Hunter, who is our lighthouse. Gentlemen, you laid your whale-sized hearts bare 
so that we could see into your souls like no one else could do. And it is my honor to be named alongside you in this category. Well, that was Brendan Fraser winning Best Actor Nom. Uh, such an amazing performance. I'm, I'm, I am so excited that he won. But we also have history in the making. Michelle Yeoh makes history by becoming the first Asian actress to win the Best Actress in a Leading Role nomination for her role in, again, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And this is what Michelle had to say, Michelle Yeoh had to say about her win at the Oscars. For all the little boys and girls who look like me watching tonight, this is a beacon of hope and possibilities. This is proof that dreams dream big and dreams do come true. And ladies, don't let anybody tell you you are ever past your prime. That is right. That is right. You're never past your prime. So, guys, it was such a great Oscar night. We also got great performances from Lady Gaga, Rihanna, and the R&R &R Ensemble for their nominated song. R&R, &R, if you guys oh, know, is an yeah, indie so. film that took Netflix by storm uh, and, you know, got nominated and won original song. So, guys, I don't know if you had the chance to see the Oscars, but what do you guys think about the Oscars? All right. I have an opinion on this. Okay. Let me know. So, I believe both uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Zhu were nominated for everything ever all at once. Jamie Lee Curtis only won it because she's old. Oh, wow. wow. She only won it because she's been in all these movies, but hasn't won anything. Wow. She wasn't, she wasn't, she wasn't the best. She wasn't the better uh, character in it. She wasn't the better actress in the movie. Mm -hmm. it, it, she only won it because she, she only won it because she's been in Hollywood for all these years and she just didn't win anything before. Wow. So I was expecting it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a makeup award. I was expecting a comment on that win but that was not the one i was expecting no the because there was two actresses nominated for said award both who are long 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 overdue for oscar wins now personally i don't really care about oscar wins i don't really hold much value on um academy uh, awards such as oscars and the grammys but a lot of people do it and it's very personal for people when somebody so renowned in their field goes almost their entire career without one of the most prestigious awards in their category and there was two there was jamie lee curtis and there was also angela bassett for oh, her yeah, role bassett. in yeah, forever, black yeah. panther 2 and i was looking online and a lot of people feel like the award should have went to angela bassett but a lot of people highly suspect that the Academy does not respect superhero movies, in particular Marvel movies. That's what they feel. They feel, first of all, I believe I saw somewhere, my facts might be right. Somebody looked us up while I talked to fact check me. I don't know whether that was the first nomination for a Marvel movie or whether she was the first woman to be nominated. Um, but it's, it's something think, along those lines. I think, I think the first Black Panther was nominated for like, it might have been best picture. It might have been, but either way, it is very rare. People feel like the Academy is very clear that they don't really value Marvel as much as they do others, and some believe. Yeah, usually that. Marvel gets nominated for like special effects and mm -hmm. visual effects, and and that's about it. But really? I'm a, I'm a, I'm googling right now where you're you know just to check, and I I'm just like saying off the top of my head again. I'm not the most knowledgeable in this, but when I mm -hmm. see things like this, it flags me, and it flags me because I was a very interesting take, especially from somebody who doesn't really follow awards like that so when i hear things like angela bass has been acting for 40 plus years and never won an oscar i'm like really um mm -hmm. jamie I i'm hearing jamie lee curtis never won an oscar that's the first time i'm hearing um when um hearing about last year will smith won his very first Oscar. that shocked me i'm like how many people haven't won oscars but then again it's like that's why these so-called prestigious awards um fall for lack of better terms, on deaf ears to me, because there's some people that I might regard as the best actor or actress in the world, and they might not even have so much as ever won so much as anything. Mm, yeah, so to it's, fast check yeah. you, this is the first acting nomination for a Marvel movie. Mm. So, but And then, as yeah. you said before, I don't know if it was Tanner or JT, Black Panther got nominated for Best Picture. 
And but the rest is like best original song, best visual effects, best makeup, and stuff like that. So you know, this is this is important I that think, it happened. I think Wakanda Forever won for costume design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did see that. Uh, yes, yeah. but and it's the it's the the person who won was the first black woman to win an Oscar in that category, and she won. You know, I th I don't remember the first one, but she won the second time here. Yeah. So I I would I would say I would have chosen Angela Bassett or Stephanie Zhu over. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis wow. on this. Jamie, she's she's like the fourth most important character in the movie. Maybe fifth. Maybe fifth. She's the IRS agent. She's the IRS agent. She's, you know, she's in the movie, yeah. But, you know, one is... I, I, I'm not going to spoil the movie, actually. No, don't. <laughs> never, no, no, please, never mind. Don't I, was, I was going don't to, that, but... Guy. Don't do that. It but, was you a know. really good movie, though. It deserved that. Yeah, and if... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, you I, haven't I was, watched it, you gotta, was, you gotta, whatever, rent it, do whatever, watch that movie. It. It's such a great movie. If well, you if you want to, you know. I, I yeah, know. <laughs> I saw it actually. So I I watched it a couple months ago. I watched it on a plane to California. Mm. Um, this is great watch for a and I ride. and I was like, wow, this movie is awesome. And I kept telling my family, like, hey, let's watch this tonight. And they were like, oh, maybe like another day. And then what was that? uh wednesday i think wow spring break yeah. it was showing in a theater like 20 minutes from our house and i was like come on let's go and we went to go wait see. what theater was it uh oh, it was yeah. on it was on route one mm. okay because i got went to see it in a theater last week too it was the amc in rockaway nope it was and regal yeah. Well, you know, if you have a chance to see it in a movie theater, I, I would recommend it. But if you can, then just watch it at home. And you know, it's a I I recommend it. For me, it's it one of those movies that I think changed a lot, and I think we're gonna be talking about for years after years because it just it, the things they did in that movie are like you know spectacular. And you know, and not only the acting, the effects, the story, everything about it. And hey, they just won this, all the Oscars. <laughs> and this is this is from a guy who. Dressed up as Tom Cruise for Halloween. Yeah. It was Top Gun Maverick was nominated for Best Picture. Yes. He's not, yes. He's, you know. And they won that's how good Best Sound is. Editing. Wow. Woo. Yeah. Important. <laughs> hey, that's good. That's hey. Important. We're on a radio station. That is true. That is true. We're on a radio station. That is I true. Sound editing is important. Yeah, hey, that those sounds are important. You know, we got to know those, the airplane sounds, you yeah. know, so it's very important. Uh, But yeah, I, you know. And also the Lady Gaga performance for me was very spectacular. Uh, and we're going to play the song that she sang in that performance, mm -hmm. Hold My Hand. Uh, the winner is R&R &R, uh, with Nada Nada. Uh, but, you know, I think Hold My Hand was like very special. So I just want to play that song for you guys. And we're going to take a quick music break and then we'll be right back with our segment host JT with Thea, you know, yes, he's doing sir, double yes, feature sir. right now. He's doing <laughs> co-host plus segment host, but yeah, we got hold my hand by lady Gaga. So I hope you guys enjoyed this song as I did watching her performance last night.
And this is 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. That was Hold My Hand by Lady Gaga. Mm. It was it's a good song. It's a good tell. song. It was a good song. And you know, oh, if you man. have the chance to see the performance, then I would recommend watching it because it's just like literally Lady Gaga sounds just like the song. So Lady Gaga has always been an amazing performer. Um, anyway, shifting away from Oscars news, we have some campus things. It's the first day back off of spring break, yes, first yes. day of the week. So, of course, I gotta let you know everything that's happening on campus. Let's keep it going. On Monday, first things first, we're gonna start with SGA Philanthropy Bake Sale. Um, who is hosting this event? Who knows? Well, we'll see. The host organization is going to be none other than the SGA. They will be supporting Eve's Village, and you can go there, and you can get yourself some baked goods. It's going to be today. It's going to be at 12 p.m., and it's going to be in Dixon Hall, 1C07, in the lobby. Um. Anyway, uh, you got some other things going on. Um, Red Hawk Pantry is always um every Monday, eleven a.m. to one thirty p.m. in the Blanton Hall. They're there for you if you need anything from food to clothes, you name it. Um, keep it going, keep it going. We have Let's Talk uh, Caps uh session that is hosted several times a week. The first one is today in the Sprague Library room two o two. It's going to be from one to two thirty p.m. Um, there's also going to be a career fair prep workshop. If you check your emails and your in the loop emails, there's a Zoom link online that is going to be today from two o'clock to two forty five. Um, last really thing today is there's another Let's Talk session that's going to be in the Center for Environmental Life and Science room three twenty eight, and it's going to be from three o'clock to four. 30 moving on on to but a mom drum roll please while i pull this up moving on no not even moving on because also if you were here before you were listening we had our very own ali arario and if you christian mcbride and the cali school of music will be hosting yet another artist in residence with him this monday which is today duh at 2 30 and another one at six o'clock Last thing we really have for today, 8.45 p.m., I actually mean it this time, is an informational soiree. The Sisters of Omega Pi Chai will be hosting an informational session for interested ladies ready to learn about Omega Pi Chai multicultural sorority and have a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with some undergraduate chapter sisters. That all sounds very exciting. Now I actually mean it. We're actually going to move on. Red Hawk Pantry will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in Blanton Hall, followed at 11 a.m. by yet another session of Let's, Let's Talk. This one online, I want to make sure I really enforce the Let's Talk. Um, we could all use somebody to talk to, especially with um, the, the, sorry, I'm blanking here, especially with the semester starting back up again. Yeah, we're halfway there. We're Always halfway there. Halfway there. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Um, the first of the rec nights is going to be tomorrow at 7 p.m., all the way to 9 p.m. They're going to be making St. Patrick's button making. I hope you guys are excited for St. Patrick's Day because I know I am. Um, there's going to be an anti-hazing prevention workshop at 8.30 to 9.30 tomorrow in the Student Center room for 11. Moving on to Wednesday. Wednesday is as we know and love. There are so many meetings for whatever club you may be involved in or interested in. It's going to be another in-residency at the Cali School of Music at 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. Violin Masterclass with Dominic Salarini. Followed at 11 a.m. by yet another session of Let's Talk. There are several of them throughout the week. Make sure to catch one of them if you would like, of course. Um, 11 a.m. to 1230 in Student Center, room 422. Um, there will be Werewolf Game Night on Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. in University Hall, room 1010. Um, stop by if you like Werewolf Game Night for a suspicious murder mystery game with the Society of Unnatural Phenomenon. Uh, moving on to Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. What do we have here? We have... What do we have? <laughs> <laughs> um, once again, let's talk at 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. That is going to be online. Um, could AI be coincidence? Philosophy for Lunch is going to be held in Schmidt Hall, room 104 at 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. Um, 
the Bulls fraternity will be hosting a monster tailgate in the student center quad at 12 to 3 p.m. in another uh, session of Let's Talk from 3 to 4 30 p.m. in Cole Hall, room of 337. That's about all we they really um, have left. AJT, is yes. there something else happening on Thursday? Of course, of course. Let me get there. Let me get there. <laughs> WMSC very own will be hosting our very own St. Patrick's Day bake sale. That is true. Mm -hmm. Um, on Friday, wrapping it up for the week, the um skate club general body meeting. Of course, one of the only meetings that happen on Friday and not a Wednesday is going to be hosted from two o'clock to three p.m. University Hall. President is um at WBC's very own Lauren Bedevegna. And the last thing that's really happening, um, starting on Friday is Players Camp Little Falls Dance Show. It is a it is a 80s horror themed dance show. It's going to be held in um, the Student Center Annex Red Hawk Next from 8 to 10 p.m. That is also going to be held on Saturday around the same time. That's about all I got for this um for this week. This um semester is going to close out nicely. This has been JT in his unusually long <laughs> segment. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It happens. But uh, yeah, I'm you know it's important we you know we have the let's talks you know done by cast one hundred percent. I think so, that's also the first time I've really like expanded on just how many there are during the week. There is a lot. Mm -hmm. While caps some um caps themselves may be busy throughout the week as we all are. That's why they have these sessions for you guys to pop in, sit down, talk with a professional, talk with somebody. Um, that's exactly what they're there for. Also, a fun little vague reminder that even if you are unable to meet Let's Talk, you can always pop into Caps. You can always pop into your trusted advisor. You know, just want to spread the message of if you ever need to sit down and talk, make sure you do that. Yeah, of course, of course. And, you know, I'm excited for the bake sale for the St. Patrick's 100%, 100%. Our uh, Valentine's bake sale was a hit. If, you, um, if you're interested, you can see us make another hit. Yeah, I'll make another hit with St. Patty's. We'll be in the lobby of University Hall. Yes, that's yes, and I'm excited for that. And what else? There was something that I that really caught my eye. Oh, AI. You know, there's gonna be a talk about AI. AI is so interesting, artificial intelligence. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what they talk about. And I'm gonna tease something right now. We have an AI story, uh, in the mix in the second hour. That you know, I try Chat GPT and see if they can write a story for the morning bus. Oh, 100 percent so <laughs> that's gonna be interesting and i hope you guys are gonna enjoy that and just a little tease just a little tease I, I was very interested in werewolf game night werewolf game night but that that sounds I, I i was that that's the that's that was the one where i just was like what what did, yeah what did you just say yeah i wonder what 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 is I I guess it's like trivia or something, right? Like trivia. It's a murder mystery. Murder mystery. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. But it's so, werewolf. But it's werewolves. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of things to do. Uh, Montclair is great because of that. You know, we have a lot of activities. If you're not, 100%. yeah. So like, if you're not going out, like it's your fault. Like it's not <laughs> Montclair's fault. It's your <laughs> fault. Okay. They really do. Wow. Have to no, it's just yeah, I got. Call I had to, out say, I had to say it. I had to say it. Like, if you're not like, there's a lot going on. Like, you like just go out. Like, literally, if you walk to the student center, like, there's a million things happening. So, I wanted to play another song from that was nominated for an Oscar and also had a performance by Is Rihanna. Yes. It's Riri. And then I think I'm gonna play R and R, so you guys know what what R and R is. One hundred percent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play both. For this, and then we're gonna go into our second hour with more stories and also the Chat GBT story, which yes, I'm excited <laughs> to to present. Oh, so man. for now, we got "Lift Me Up" by Rihanna, best best of Rihanna song nominee. Hey, Joey, pissed off, got enough.
Cool. An event. And this is 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, and this is The Morning Bus. I am Victor Muniz Rosa. I am joined by JT Bethia, Tanner Price, and Lana Hapadakis. This is the second hour of The Morning Bus. Uh, you know, we had a first hour, now we got the second hour. And we're going to start with our chat GPT story, which, you know, we teased earlier on. But before we do that, we got news. Lana. Take it away with the news. Sorry, I was with <laughs> Blaster for a second because you, 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 know, you went Lana and then Lana. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's Lana. Not. It's Lana. Yeah. Lana Kalapadakis. I'm sorry. No, you're Lana. Take it away with the news. <laughs> In national news, eight people are dead after two smuggling boats capsized off the coast of San Diego. Authorities received a call from a woman Saturday night who was on one of the boats reporting the other boat had capsized. The capsizing is believed to be caused by rough waters and intense fog. The Coast Guard and Fire Rescue have found eight bodies and are continuing their search. In state news, a Monmouth County small business is closing after 120 years of operation. Becker Hardware in Colts Neck has been in the town for 52 years of their 120 years of business. Quote, closing the store was very difficult decision for the entire family. We leave the business with great warmth and appreciation for the many employees that we've had over the years, as well as our suppliers and everyone who has walked through our doors, says Art Baker, the owner. The store's last day is March 17th. In local news, a man from Newark was found stabbed in a parking garage. 31-year-old Jabari A. Manson was found dead in the garage Friday morning. Police are still investigating and no suspects have been currently released. It is currently 38 degrees and cloudy with a high of 45 and a low of 37 with a ch high chance of rain throughout the day. Humidity is at 90% with good air quality at 31. Mm, thank you so much for that news update. And we also got sports. So Tanner Price, take it away with sports. Yes, howdy, howdy. It's sports time. Sports time. Over the weekend, Bears sent the first overall pick to the Carolina Panthers uh, in exchange for pick number nine this year. Pick number 61, a 2024 first and a 2020 and a 2024 second round pick, as well as star receiver DJ Moore. Uh, so Carolina gets the first overall pick this year, 2023. We'll see who they draft. There's a lot of quarterbacks that they could draft. And but the day I have dreaded for the last couple of weeks is upon us. Jalen Ramsey has been traded. Ramsey, a six-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro and Super Bowl 56 champion, has been traded to the Miami Dolphins for a third round pick. And tight end Hunter Long, uh, Ramsey joins the list of Bradley Chubb and Tyree Kill, the players to be traded to the Dolphins recently. The Rangers lost 3-2 to in overtime to the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first of three matchups versus Pittsburgh this week for the Blue Shirts. The Devils with a huge win over the Carolina Hurricanes, winning 3-0. The Devils and Hurricanes now tied in points atop the Metro Division. In yesterday's World Baseball Classic action, Japan beat Australia 7-1. to Italy beat the Netherlands 7-1. to Israel beat Nicaragua 3 to 1. Canada beat Great Britain 18 to 8. Venezuela beat Puerto Rico 9 to 6. Wow. Australia beat the Czech Republic 8 to 3 and the US lost to Mexico 11 to 5. Today's games are Korea versus China. Um and the last sports cast I said Korea versus China was 2-2 two -two in the second inning. It is now 18 to 2 uh in favor of Korea. A grand that slam was 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 hit as I've been reading this Sports cast, so it's currently 18 to 2 in the top of the fourth inning. Dominican Republic versus Nicaragua today at noon, Colombia versus Great Britain at three, Israel, Puerto Rico at seven, and finally Canada versus the USA at 10. The Knicks defeated the Lakers 112 to 108. RJ Barrett and Julius Randle with 30 points in the Knicks win each. The Nets defeated the Nuggets with a score of 122 to 120. Unlike the Knicks, the Nets got scoring from everywhere, with eight players putting up 10 or more points in the win. The NCAA basketball tournament was released yesterday. Rutgers has missed the tournament, being the second team out. Two New Jersey teams are going dancing, those being Fairleigh Dickinson and Princeton. The tournament begins tomorrow with the first four. Yes, thank you so much for that news update. Obviously, I'm super excited for the World's Baseball Classic, so we'll see what happens in the coming weeks uh, with the different teams. But we got a story. We got an interesting story yesterday, you know, I was writing I was writing a story and I was like, hmm, I want to see how powerful chat GBT is. 
and how, and if they could write a story for the morning bus. You know, without a doubt, artificial intelligence will be the future of how we work in different fields and technology, science, mm -hmm. but it also includes radio. <laughs> As a curious person myself, I wanted to see if Chat GPT could be a good writer and producer and write a story. Chat GPT is an artificial intelligence chatbot created by OpenAI. You can ask it to write about anything. You know, I was testing it out and I wrote, oh, what it, why is ranch the worst dressing? Site works. And it wrote a whole essay about how people do not like ranch. Like it was very interesting. Do you think ranch is the worst dressing? I don't like ranch. But ranch, that's a story for another day. That's a, that's a no, story for another day. But a story, slight, slight to a sidebar for this one. I was on one of the um, Montclair um, Instagram pages, one of those like little goofy ones. There's the confessions one. And you know where people pretty much snitch on themselves. I think half of it is fake, but that's beside the point. One of them, which I suspected was kind of fake because of how stupid the story was, was some student here at Montclair is worried that they may get expelled because their professor caught them using Chat GPT yeah. for an essay. Yeah. It was one of those stories that I just genuinely that just generally confirmed my belief that half of those confessions are fake because it was one of those you can't be this stupid type of yeah. stories. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, my professor literally like showed me an example of coming up with the same essay. And it's interesting that we're bringing up a story in, in which we think that uh, AI will be the future of writing mm -hmm. because for one little fact, employers already are noticing the lack of the ability to write mm -hmm. in a couple of years time. If that is true, everything's going to look the same. Yeah. So I really That's hope that people don't thought. use AI to write everything for them because like Alana just said, that is a very scary thought. <laughs> it is scary. And when, you know, I needed a, I wanted to see how powerful it is. Mm -hmm. So I went in and asked chat GPT to write a story about how sales of vinyl records have sold more than CDs in 2022. This is the story completely written by AI. Everything is written by it. Even the headline is written by Shaq GPT. So vinyl revival, sales of vinyl records overtake CDs for the first time since the 80s. Our top story today is music to the ears of vinyl enthusiasts everywhere. Sales of vinyl records have finally overtaken CDs for the first time since the late 80s. That's right, folks, vinyl is back in vogue. According to a report by Ars Technica, vinyl records have seen a resurgence in popularity over the last few years with sales increasing steadily while CD sales have been declining. In fact, vinyl records accounted for more than a third of all physical music sales in 2022. So what's driving this trend? Some experts believe the younger generations are rediscovering the joys of vinyl, while others think it's just a matter of nostalgia. Whatever the reason, it's clear that vinyl isn't going away anytime soon. And now for some vinyl-themed jokes. What do you call a DJ who only plays vinyl records? A turntablist. And why did the vinyl record go to outer space? To visit the vinyl frontier. Oh, yeah, this was AI, all right. So, <laughs> you know, usually second hour stories, I like to add like little puns and jokes. So I told the AI, hey, can you add like jokes to the story? And so like adding it throughout, they just added it at the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I was like, that's funny. So I just put it at the end. So as a producer, I was impressed with Chad GPT. And, you know, maybe maybe they'll steal my job soon. We'll see. No, you However, you know, I think I still think that some things are still like little robotic. You know, it's, it is a robot. Yeah. And it's like one of the things about writing that distinctively distincts a good writer from a um, robotic writer, for lack of a better term, is the personability. Um, people always write, good writers always write with a sense of, personability mm -hmm. you just can't help no matter how professional you make your paper there's always this just this need you can definitely tell who wrote something um i've been on the morning buzz for three different semesters and fun little fact every semester four semesters actually every semester that i've been on the morning buzz i've been as our co-host or segment host the host has been a producer so they've been taking over the script and just their writing i can literally look at a script and be like okay this was kenny okay this is isaiah Okay, this was Laura. Okay, this was Victor. Yeah. Um, Benny Horn and I said Ramirez, past producers of The Morning Bus. 100%. Mm -hmm. And just the, the, the me bringing that up is because 
a writing a writer no matter you the script is always pretty much the same it's always the same format you know it's a little bit of a, different here and there there are certain segments that are here but the prop the point is the format may be the same but the writing itself you can tell who wrote the script just by the mere word choices or just by when there's jokes in the chat just by the type of jokes mm-hmm. um the way the the way the headlines are written in the script so if ai truly takes over a couple of years from now that the whole personality that's in writing which is the beauty of writing is just going to be gone yeah for now i think artificial intelligence it, it should it should be used as a tool not like the whole for example you know we have dolly which is a place where you write a prompt and it creates art I think people should use it as a reference, not on your whole assignment, it's, like, you know, I, the person you mentioned. So I think it's the same thing with yeah. ChatGPT. Like, if you feel like you're stumped, I think you could use ChatGPT to, like, help you out, like, try to create ideas mm-hmm. and stuff like that. There, so we'll see, like, what happens in the future. But for now, it's just a tool. Don't use it as your main thing, you know. I use it as a main thing just for one, an example, but, one, you know, one, I wouldn't use it again. Yeah, one thing with AI, there's always, you know, everyone talks you know about the uncanny valley mm-hmm. any any ai generated image mm-hmm. it's just so it looks so real but mm-hmm. it's not and yes. you just have that thought in the back of your mind that it is not real exactly yeah i, I agree it's, like it's there's always something that's but off I, but i could tell that this like this writing something about it is just off i could tell it's not <laughs> yeah i could just tell that it's not written by a human being yes so yeah but i gotta say you know i was impressed of because what i was worried about that it was gonna write an essay so i went mm-hmm. you know you have to be very specific with the chat just chat about you gotta say oh i want a radio newscast story about this specific topic you know i linked the article i add i you know i asked it to add the jokes and stuff and you know if you had, you don't you have to be specific so it can like really write something good. And I think it did a pretty good job, but I'm not going to be using it. You know, I don't want it to steal my job. So I'm not going to give it the thumb there. I'm not going to give it the exposition. Sorry, chat, chat GPT. This is my job. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to go to a quick break and then we'll be right back with the segment. Am I in the wrong? So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick break. <laughs> And this is 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Music skates cool. Good to dog on a skateboard. Oh, oh yeah. We got to change that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we already did change that. Well, we haven't played it in a while. Like, it's not even in, like, you know, the automated stuff. So oh, I haven't heard it in a while. For our production director. <laughs> <laughs> 
hey, I love that top that top of the hours. You know, let's not talk about you know, let's not talk bad about the the dog and a skateboard. Yeah, it's a dog. <laughs> let's get on a skateboard. Dog and a skateboard. What's nah, cool? what's who, cooler than that? Whoever okay, made that so, was definitely so what is cooler than a dog. That is you know what is cool to this dog skateboard? What? People complaining about their first word problems on Reddit. Yes. Yeah. Am I in the wrong yeah. is the segment we're going to start with. And, you know, we got an interesting story. Uh, JT, do you want to read this? Am I in the wrong story? Oh, I deliberately did not read this ahead of time. So oh, my right. reactions could be 100% authentic. Oh, Am go. I <laughs> in the wrong for not wanting to pay my for my daughter's education only under certain conditions? Oof. Let's oh, go. Starting <laughs> off with a swing. Let's go. I, a 52-year-old male, have two kids. A son who's 26 years old, a male, and a daughter who's 19-year-old, a female. When my son went to college, I thought college would open up opportunities. He was supposed to, and he was supposed to major in computer silent science, but he failed a bunch of classes, and then he changed his major to something less lucrative. He went out of state, and now I realize this was a poor investment. I did not want to make the same mistakes as my daughter. She also wants to do computer science, and last year she got into a foreign university in the UK, which she says is like Stanford over there is Cambridge. I didn't want the same thing to happen to her. So I told her I can't help her pay for that and go to a local state university or a community college then transfer. She ended up not going, but deferred her admission to see if this year she could get a loan, which I'm not for, but it's her life. Or if she could get a scholarship for a better American college. She seems a little annoyed at me since effectively her brother got more money, but that was before I knew better. I could afford the same for her, but it would be tighter now, and I don't want the same thing to happen, especially if it would be for a foreign degree. I suspect the same thing could happen to her brother since he was technically the brighter one while she just pushed herself the last few years of school. So, oh, guys, what do you think? Oh, this it's is this is the most in the wrong someone has ever been in on anything that I've read on this show. Nah, Miss Laughing at My Barbara Sister was dead. Yeah. No, that is it was a crazy this story. This was a father? Oh. <laughs> Just because what really got to me, you know, when I was reading the story is like Cambridge. Um, I don't know if it's a good school or anything. Like Cambridge yeah. is one of the most important schools. Not in like not in the UK. Better than in the Stanford. world. In if, the world. If, you, if, if someone gets into Cambridge, they will probably, you know, work hard to pass through Cambridge. It should just be an accomplishment to get and in there. He's just assuming that she's going to be like her brother. She's a, a totally different yeah. person. It's like, actually, I've had similar conversations um, regarding paying for um, children's college. Not in the sense of what I personally pay for my kids' college. I don't know. I'm not there yet. Just in terms of how do people feel about that. And one thing about me as somebody who relies heavily on grants and scholarships and loans and still can barely pay the leftover thousand or if I'm lucky less than thousand that's left over. Um, I strongly support um, parents paying for children's college because like at the end of the day, if you look at how expensive college is, the way I see it, you need, we need money. We need a job to make money. We need a degree to, uh, we need a degree to get a job, but we need money to get the degree. It's like the cycle. It's like one of those what came first, the chicken or the egg type of things, where it's like you're not really sure where to start. And if you don't have help getting in, it's very hard, if not practically impossible, to get in. And so when I just hear stories about like parents not paying for their uh, – it's one thing if they just generally cannot. Like my mother can't help me as much as she probably wishes she could for – her own personal reasons and that's understandable but when i read stories where it's just like um yeah i didn't pay for my daughter's college because she didn't major what i wanted or well her brother dropped out so i'm not paying for yours or like the topic of conversation that i had before which was um i don't know how i even got on this but it was like um if your daughter or son only went to college to follow their significant other would you pay for it like things Ooh. like that where i'm just like that is those are just the most trivial reasons not to pay like the only viable excuse in my book is if i physically cannot support like yeah. my mom will help me when she can but she can't pay everything like i have to help out and that's understandable the one the one thing that stood out to me was when he said uh that was before 
Uh, she seems a little annoyed at me since effectively her brother got more money. That was before I knew better. Did you not know that people could could not pass college? Yeah. Like how? It's, did it's, you what did what did what did you not know? You yeah. have to know that that is an option. Did this that man happen. not go to college? Uh, well, he didn't know what Cambridge is, so maybe. And he said, <laughs> and he said, I didn't want the same thing to happen to her. See, you could. So apply... you effectively ruined her chances. Yes, you could. Yeah, and, and like you didn't no. give her a chance. You know what the you know what the correct thing to do is here. If you want, if you don't want the same thing to happen, you, uh, you know, you check in. You ask, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing in classes? Do you need help? Mm -hmm. You know, do you do you think that this is you just have a talk, mm -hmm. you know, every week or two? Yeah. Just of how are things going? Exactly. Um that that's all you have to do. Yeah. Not not that not I <laughs> have the, a same, talk. the same thing is she's not going to have the same exact college life as her brother did. Mm -hmm. That's just not going to happen. Exactly. You know, who knows if who knows if you know she she'll do better well she's do... she got something in cameras like come on like she i think she's doing a, really good yeah. <laughs> you know every week i laugh I slash think... complain slash ridicule these first world problems but this I mean, is a little a step yeah. above a first world problem yeah, no, this, is... this is just you airing out your very 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 dirty laundry <laughs> out on yeah. and i yeah oh and he said he says sounds about white i'm sorry um <laughs> Uh, it's and the only thing I could get is when he says it would be for a foreign degree. I I guess I could see that, but still, it's Cambridge. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure, sure anywhere she goes yeah, with a Cambridge yeah. degree, they will any job would be like yes, yes, please. And and saying I suspect the same could happen to her since her brother was typically the brighter one. No, she pushed barely not. Last years of school. Barely not. <laughs> she pushed herself the last years of school to go to probably Cambridge to probably. Uh -huh. She, acknowledge, she acknowledged that there was a problem and addressed it. That's what your son didn't do. And that's why he's not in school anymore. That's exactly. why he's not in school anymore. Yeah. But she addressed that there was a problem and that that's the issue solved right there. Yes. Um, what yes. are you doing? Yo, Tanner went from not being able to be heard the first hour to peeking the audio. Peaking. <laughs> yes. This mic is insane. Yes. Ah, what what is this guy doing? Yeah, so the Reddit consensus is that he is definitely in the wrong. Yeah. He's definitely in the wrong. So hopefully, like, bro, just give a chance. Give a chance to your daughter. I think she's doing good. She's on the right path. Like, just give her a chance. Hey, Victor. Yes. Could I read the next one? Oh, you want to read? Let's yeah. go for it. Go for it, Lana. Yay. Go for it. Am I in the wrong for calling my son inconsiderate? I, a 46-year-old female, have twins, 19-year-old males, and another son, 16-year-old male. My son loves to cook and bake. To him, it's his source of relaxation. Alfredo, burgers, pizza, you name it. Heck, even a whole cake, he can make it. Everyone who's met him knows he's a fantastic cook. However, he prefers only to cook for himself and gets really annoyed when my twins walk in on him cooking and ask him to make them food as well. He'll end up doing it but he does it very begrudgingly and usually gives them a much smaller portion than his own serving, which my twins don't like. They both have jobs and will sometimes use their job money to buy us all a little fast food. So they find it really upsetting how their younger brother never returns the favor by primarily cooking for himself. The other day, neither of my twins had class and weren't really in the mood for the food that we had in the house. My son came back from school and decided to make himself some banana pudding. When my twins asked for some as well, he told them they could just make it themselves, and the ingredients were all still there. My son put the banana pudding in the fridge and went to go take a shower while it was chilling. When he came back down, he saw that my twins had eaten it all, and this really upset him. When he told me about the situation, I confronted the twins, to which they said that it was really rude for him to only make something for himself, knowing that they were hungry as well. And like he said, he could always make some more. I told my son that while they shouldn't have eaten his food, that they were right, and he was very inconsiderate. My son replied that it's not fair how he gets back from school and is expected to make food for his older siblings, that they can just get a cookbook and learn how to make things for themselves. I told my son that if he's not going to cook for everybody, then he can't cook anymore. He's been pretty moody ever since. Obviously, his brother shouldn't have eaten his food, but it takes no effort to just make a larger portion of the food he's cooking so everyone can have it. My husband thinks I'm in the right. 
but I'm really not happy with how things are right now between my children. You think? <laughs> w W W twins. Yes. W. That, <laughs> oh, that is that is. If someone told me the ingredients are there, may, like, and didn't give me any, I would just eat what they made. Yeah. I that I. Good job. So, what you guys think? In the wrong? Ooh, this is a no, huge toss no, up. No, because no, because the twins are buying fast food for the probably the whole family. Mm -hmm. So that includes the brother that makes the food. So you know, pay it back. And I'm assuming they're good. going to college right now, since she said that they were in school. They didn't have yeah. school, so. Yeah. So the thing is that I don't know. I think I understand her point of like. You know, if you're going to make food, like, you know, why not make for everybody? But at the same time, like, he's the only one, yeah. like, making the effort to make food. I understand. So, like, that. you know, maybe the others should learn. Like, what's I happening? understand that. I understand that. I fully understand that. But if the other, if the twins are buying, you know, fast food, getting fast food for the family, that is, then, you know, you should pay it back and make some food for, you know. What, you if, know. what if they all cook together? Be a family activity. It could be a big family gathering. Yeah, but if you, if you're gonna say if you're gonna say, uh, make make the food yourself, then the twins just just say, then get the fast food yourself, which she probably can't. He's sixteen. Doesn't say he's a job. Probably can't drive. So, I think, I I don't think the mother in this case is in the wrong for saying that the youngest son is inconsiderable well honestly she doesn't even seem like she's taking much of a side she's she sounds like she's being very reasonable i think the um, yeah, am yeah. i in the wrong is between the youngest and the twins mm -hmm. to which i say it's this is a uh, this is a hard one it is once again my favorite term to use a first world problem <laughs> i'd be laughing at them all but it is still a huge toss-up this is the um this is the danger about having children it's like they're both I can't even say anybody's particularly the wrong because both sides have points were so wit but however when it comes to that when you whenever you hit a crossroad where it's like hmm, you're not necessarily wrong but you know you're not necessarily right there is one big solution that everybody loves to skip over a simple compromise yeah. nothing is stopping him from helping out you know helping out cooking. However, nothing is stopping them from learning how to cook. Mm -hmm. And I think they're wasting time trying to be trying to point the blame. Well, you should cook for us. Uh, well, you should cook for yourself. I think doing that just is counterproductive, mm -hmm. waste time. Um, But, you know, what do you expect from people who decide to turn to Reddit to solve their problems? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So Reddit consensus is that the person you know that wrote this uh, story is in the wrong it's in the wrong so you know we've we had some mixed opinions here but and you know the reddit consensus is that she is in the wrong so you know it's been interesting it's been interesting but we're gonna go to a quick break and then we'll be right back with more stories we got an interesting story here about sugar daddy appreciation day oh, yes daddy. you heard it sugar daddy appreciation day do we have sugar so, by Jackson 5 on next gen? We might, but I, I, I don't know, maybe <laughs> now you put me on the spot. <laughs> Please stand by while Victor checks. Yeah, so let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh I don't see it. I don't see Man. it. Oh, well, we got we got Cracker Island by the Gorillas. So I hope you guys enjoyed this amazing song. <laughs>
And this is 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. You're listening to The Morning Bus with Victor Muniz Rosa, JT Bethia, Tanner Price, and Lana Caleb Dacus. So, as I teased before, we got the day of the sugar daddy and mommy. Hmm. According to the Oxford Dictionary, a sugar daddy or mommy is a rich person who lavishes gifts on a young person in return for their company. A Florida woman thinks the Sunshine State to celebrate sugar daddies and sugar mommies by dedicating an entire day to them. Ashley Cream spoke in front of the Boca Raton Planning and Zoning Board and asked that March 10th become Sugar Daddy and Mommy Appreciation Day. Cream said, end quote, you guys may not be aware, but Florida has the largest per capita population of sugar daddies in the U.S., with Miami, Palm Beach, and Boca Raton having the most concentrated populace of these age benefactors. Cream said this while she was accompanied by an elderly man in a wheelchair who is presumed to be her sugar daddy. After Cream made her petition, one of the board members, Arno Savelle, said, end quote, that's a city council issue, end quote. <laughs> So wait, 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 wait. So they let her go through her whole spiel and then they just pretty much said, not my problem. This is not this is not the place. <laughs> literally, literally, that's yeah, that's, that is the I, most Florida thing I've ever heard. It is, it is. It's been a while since I did a Florida story, and I needed to start with that one. It was just like I oh, read it and I was like, What is this? And and yeah, the whole thing was. Yeah, it was it was insane. It was insane. I, just that's how oh. how I described it. And if you click the link, you can see the you know our 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 people here in in the studio. If you click the link, you can see the person. And and yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. But you know, maybe it'll happen. Maybe she's gonna go to the oh, Boca Raton City Council and get that sugar daddy mommy oh. appreciation day. We'll see what happens. What do you guys think about this? <laughs> How about Sugar Daddy Appreciation Day? <laughs> I'm surprised we don't already have one. You know how many stupid holidays we yeah. have? <laughs> Look at the national calendar. Yeah, national napping but, day. Like, oh, I don't know, man. Napping Knowing day. America, this would just cause more problems. But you know what? Bring them on, I guess. <laughs> like, if you want to bring, if you want to introduce a national Sugar Daddy Appreciation Day, Hey, well, this is for Florida for now, but oh, that go, that makes even more sense. Go, maybe they'll go. Well, for now, it's like a city, like city holiday. But maybe they'll go, you know, statewide and then nationwide. Maybe worldwide. We'll, we'll see. Universe wide. Universe wide. This is international. Mars. Mars is going to be celebrating this. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> now. Universal. Um. Try it. Day, <laughs> sugar daddy appreciation day and mommy that was sugar daddy and mommy. Mommy. that was really hard to say <laughs> now a question for the group consensus how do we feel on mommy and daddies of sugar how do hey, we feel hey um, you know this everybody has their own will and you know yeah. if they want to benefact and like give money to people like you know I, i'm not gonna judge them you know they have their own reasons you know i we need money. the Get sugar the people sugar people <laughs> can do what they do it's their life exactly. I'm, I'm not gonna all i'm gonna say is i didn't have it daddy but i would more than likely invite us <laughs> i'm sorry Anna trying to run at the studio got me i'm sorry oh but <laughs> i shouldn't expect that i didn't expect that i did you not expect to finish no, the comment no, and tanner like jumps up no, you know, no, that, was, I, I, that was wow i did not I, expect that comment. that was something you were gonna That's say on air right listen <laughs> listen listen for context that i didn't think i needed but apparently your reaction makes me need one i'm just saying lighthearted joke aside Personally, I don't see anything wrong with them. That was the point of that, and y'all yeah. took it a whole other direction. So, without further ado, let's talk about Teslas before I say something else. Yes, let's talk about Tesla. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally rode your Tesla. Um, a man from Vancouver accidentally unlocked and drove another person's Tesla by opening the car door with the app on his phone. Okay. Um. Rajesh Randev said he thought he was getting into his Tesla because it had the same color and model. Okay. Rajesh was in a hurry to pick up his children and started noticing it was not his car when he saw a crack on his windshield and his charger was not there. He really said, hold up. 
That's not mine. That's not mine. <laughs> After he parked the car, he realized the Tesla had different wheels. Raja said, end quote, I was surprised how I was able to drive somebody else's car by mistake for an hour and a half while his car was in his hand. Eventually, Rajas would met with the owner of the car and gave him his Tesla back. Wow, that's that's insane. Oh. Like imagine that happening to you. Like you accidentally get into someone's car and then you just drive it. Like, hey Elon, is there a way we can fix this? Yeah. <laughs> apparently so this doesn't happen again. Well, apparently this is a glitch in the app. Like this isn't supposed oh. to happen. This is a glitch. This is a glitch. Oh that, yeah. <laughs> then so, Elon, uh, can you glitch. fix your app? A glitch. <laughs> well, like anytime you can oh. unlock a call with a uh, sorry. How is there a glitch when it could lead to taking someone else's car? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? What? Know, man. What? Uh, like maybe the first red flag was making an app to unlock a car and start a car. Another. If I was a little yeah. nervous about Teslas before, I am now. Well, I've been nervous for a Although, while. I don't. I don't. I don't blame this guy. All yeah. the same color. It's all just white Teslas. That is true. That's every time I see one. You know, See, I read the headline and my first thought is, well, I've accidentally pocketed phones. I've accidentally pocketed pencils. Yes, yeah, that is true. Okay. But that I've, 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 I've also. And I noticed immediately, too. Like, I'd be like, wait, hold up. This ain't my phone. Let me do this. I've also like... made, a, made the mistake of going to, you know, going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um and going to the wrong car because it looks similar or mm -hmm. um it might be the same car yeah so it, it might be the same you know model same mm -hmm. year everything and I'll walk to that I've made that mistake before mm -hmm. but you know what Sometimes I, I you know what I don't do? all the way you know what I don't do what? get in the car drive away with it for an hour <laughs> that's true like well here's the thing because even like because I've even approached the wrong car at times and usually the first sign. That it's not my car is when my key doesn't work. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So that should be the first time, but it did work. So maybe you know. But wouldn't he also know his license plate number? So you don't. He was in a hurry, guys. Sometimes you only be looking at it. school, especially when I see like very like my car. I don't want to say it's rare, but it's a very. I have a Chrysler three hundred, and it's a very distinct red. It's a very distinct type of car. Mm -hmm. So it's not rare because there I have seen like a, a handful others like it. So it's like, it's one of those moments where it's like, you see the same model and you know exactly that. I remember one time I literally, like my key fob doesn't work. So I have to like use the manual key. Mm -hmm. I literally put the key in and jiggled it for a little bit. It's like, what is wrong? What's my, why is my car not locking? And then I noticed my mirror is kind of messed up. Like the backing on the mirror is broken. And I noticed it was fixed. And that's when I noticed that oh. wasn't my car. Mm -hmm. But again, the key shouldn't work for a car that's not yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, but it happened. Well, with an app. So oh hopefully God. this will never happen again. But, you know, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, are, are we going to divorce ourselves now? Divorce ourselves from this story until the next. <laughs> an influencer divorces herself. An influencer married herself. And after 24 hours of marriage, they decided to divorce. Nice. Sophie Marie, who has over five 500,000 followers on Twitter and Instagram, posted on social media. Her wedding, celebrating her big day with caption, today in the most spurious moments of my life, I bought a wedding dress and cooked a wedding cake to marry myself, end quote. One day passed and Marie posted, end quote, update. One day I'm married to myself and I can't take it anymore. I'm seeing how the divorce issue is just in case, end quote. Conclusion, don't marry yourself. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't even like myself like that. I don't even know. Yeah, how I wouldn't. I wouldn't marry myself. Yeah. Nah, I'm good. Like I'm good with the relationship I have with myself right now. Like I don't need to. Make so it she professional. spent money on a wedding dress. Well, we don't know that. You know, it was just a post, so we don't know if she spent money. Maybe she just thrifted it. Who knows? Yeah, but she she made. A... Did anybody come to this wedding? Was she? It was just a post. Like we don't be like you know. We just know that she got married, and 24 hours later, she divorced herself. There is so many. This is this add <laughs> just add this to the list of the amount of marriage uh, stories that we've covered on the show, or just weird marriage stories that I've seen. Yeah, this is. We have the uh, ragdoll lady, the woman who married a ragdoll. Oh, yes, claimed claimed he was cheating. Yes, that was classic. That was this. Yeah, you're right. I remember wanting to throw a story about squirrels into the um 
the script one time in our previous Morning Buzz producer was like, oh, I can't stand any more squirrel stories. But how many marriage stories have we covered have every we covered, semester? Yeah. But hey, we, we <laughs> she married we herself. My, we how are we my, not covering We have this? my favorite. My favorite <laughs> one. It's on the show My Strange Addiction when the woman married a uh, carnival ride. Oh, yes. Bruce. That, that yes, is Bruce. fresh out of a South Park episode. Uh, no, it's not. It's not that's just true. life. Life with the South Park episode at this point. How does one marry a carnival ride? They can't consent. They, they, that they, is true. The carnival they had, ride. They had a wedding. They had a wedding. Yeah. But I remember this. And I, I would play some of it. Or I can't consent. So. Who knows? Who I, knows? Well, a ragdoll can't consent either. No. At least in the influencer marriage, she can consent. Yeah. She's so. technically imagine. speaking. Can a ventriloquist dog consent? I um, I don't think no. so because you're talking through it. Unless it's in goosebumps. Hmm. Unless it's goosebumps. So exactly. so the, the question is <laughs> my brain the question I have here. Did she propose into a mirror? <laughs> mm, maybe. Right. Maybe. Did will she it, get a me? Will you marry me? <laughs> did she like how what did she do? Hey, hey, the ring was maybe, the right top. Maybe when uh people struggle a lot with self-esteem understandable of course we all have those moments this is the woman to go to whenever you're feeling down on yourself and you just don't feel like you can possibly love the beautiful human being you are talk to the woman who married herself and then divorced herself right? <laughs> that is uh that is yeah that is amazing that is amazing but uh but yeah this is uh, such a wild story but we got we got an interesting story as well involving ice cream Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. Ranch ice cream. Um, I like ranch, but JT, Ooh. take it away. Ah, <laughs> let's go. Ah, this is an abomination. But anyway, we're gonna talk about Hidden Valley's abomination on ice cream, and of course, they decided to announce it on National Ranch Day because why else would they team up with the ice cream company Van Lewin to create a ranch ice cream? Out of all things. On today's episode of People Who Get Stupider by the Day, CEO of Van Lewin, Ben Van Lewin, said in a press release, end quote, We are so excited to debut this new series of flavors and unveil what is popular, our most surprising ice cream yet, Hidden Valley Ranch, end quote. Well, you shouldn't have used surprising. You shouldn't have used stupid, because that's exactly what we got here. Um, This will be sold in so many places. It'll be sold in Walmart specifically. Um, There'll be other flavors, too. They've got a sweet maple cornbread. A- Eric cake and a honey graham cracker like what else are we getting into um the associate director for hidden valley um said and quote we know that hidden valley ranch goes with just about everything pizza carrots french fries but ice cream is a first for us and quote i wonder why it's a first for us when uh, here's a little tip whenever somebody says i've never seen this happen before there's a reason there's a quote that says there's nothing new under the sun so chances are if you find something new under the sun it's for a reason. It should not be. <laughs> but okay, in a way, I'm not surprised because have you ever seen those videos with those weird sodas? Ranch soda is a thing. That is true. Yeah. But I gotta say, I don't like ranch. I have... so this story made me disgusted. Oh, I don't I like it either. I, so it. Speaking well, of I love ranch. Weird sodas, but I don't know if I like it in ice cream. Speaking of weird sodas and stuff, over the weekend I had a uh, sugar cookie soda. Sugar. Cookie. It was really good. Well, it's sugar cookies. Sugar cookies are good. Yeah, I and with a but, soda. But when was the? Have you ever even thought of putting sugar cookies or soda together? No, no, not really. No, Actually, yeah. yes. Wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Eating sugar cookies and soda at the same time, no, like sugar cookie, sugar cookie flavored, flavored soda. soda. Ew! <laughs> it, was good. it tasted. It tasted just like sugar. Apparently, cookies. well, like, people have made like sweet corn soda, like buffalo chicken soda. Apparently, those don't taste good. But I would okay. I, I, I have always said to, I've always said, you know, I would try like a lot of foods. Mm-hmm. Might not like it or continue eating it. I would try this. I've tried, I've ate alligator before. Alligator? Don't, don't ask how it went. You but... went to Florida, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, did you fight the alligator before you ate it? No. Okay. That's... See, people like to rip on Jersey. A lot, <laughs> but then there's places like Florida and Texas mm-hmm. that exist, which Florida is trying to make sugar daddy appreciation day. I don't know what you're talking about. S- the Florida slander, please come on. You know, some <laughs> of these people need some sense slapped into them. That is true. And, that is true. and um, what <laughs> we we, I think I know the exact type of sport. 
Make it yeah, but I wanted to say before we get into that story, you know, it's going to be available on Walmarts everywhere. The Hidden Valley Ranch ice cream. And I promise you guys, I will get that ice cream and we will try it on the air. Yes. Oh, boy. Not, we'll not try it studio. on the air. We will try it yes. on the air. You might get yes. jumped. Hey, we're going to try it on the air. We're gonna, we might go outside and eat it and then give our review of the Hidden Valley Ranch. Because I want to, like, even though I don't like ranch, I know this is newsworthy. So I, we have to I, try I, it. We have the, to try here's, it. Here's the final question. What? If, like, you know, ice cream, if it, like, melts, does, is it just, can you just use it? It's like ranch. Oh, I don't think, ranch on, like, a, I don't think so because, on, like, like because it'll have a, absolutely. I, I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe. I, I wonder know. if that'll be you. Okay. So yeah. I know I know when hot food is when hot food uh is when people have hot food, they usually tend to like ice cream or other dairy products. Mm-hmm. This is just combining both. Mm, that is genius. genius. That it genius. might be genius, but we'll Absolutely. see. Should, so we'll see. We'll should we get it. some chicken wings and just <laughs> dip the chicken wing in the, the ice, ice cream? cream? Oh no. I don't like that. I know uh, I don't know about that. But for now, we'll see. We're, I'm gonna try to find it. You will see. It'll, it'll come cookie. out in late March. So I I'll try to find it. In buffalo sauce before. Why? Why? Because it Man, was, you are an interesting fella. Because <laughs> I went to I went to a restaurant and there was a bunch of sauces and my friend also brought cookies with him. So I dipped a cookie in a bunch of the sauces. You know. Don't ask. Yeah, I uh, I think we're gonna change the story. We okay. gotta go back to I, another I'm story. So concerned. Because that that what you just said just slapped me right in the face. <laughs> uh, nice. Is slap fighting the next big thing or just an unsporting stupidity? The competitors stand rightly rigidly upright with their hands behind their backs, waiting to absorb a brutal slap to the face. When the open-handed blow is delivered, there's a sharp report and the reaction can be dramatic. Some fighters, barely, uh, some fighters barely move, while others stumble backwards or fall to the floor. Some are knocked out. UFC president Dana White is selling slap fighting as the next big thing in combat sports, putting his money and the resources of one of the world's foremost mixed martial arts organizations behind the Power Slap League. The Nevada Athletic Commission has sanctioned the league for competitions in Las Vegas. Concerns about concussions leading to the CTE, which can cause violent mood swings, depression, and memory loss, are confined to combat sports. The disease has shown up in the brains of former rugby players and the NFL, and college football have taken steps to cut down on blows to the head by changing rules regarding tackling and other hits. CTE can only be detected during an autopsy. Uh, Despite the naysayers, White said he believes slap fighting will follow a similar trajectory to mixed martial arts which the late center John McCain referred to as human cockfighting in 1996 when the UFC didn't have weight classes or many rules. McCain's criticism helped force the organization to become more structured, leading to a widespread acceptance. This is very stupid, I got to say. But should, I'm but, not going to lie. Who who doesn't like want to like, who doesn't like to see a, like a good slap? When you see a good yeah. slap, you're like, whoa. Question. <laughs> whoa. Don't you dare. We need to take the slap fighting league to the morning time. Uh, no, no, absolutely right, so not. We don't condone right violence. Now. We don't condone violence here. Don't. No, we don't. And that comes from somebody who has to refrain himself from doing that to yes. seven people I meet see, during the day. We don't condone see, violence. See, see, I I love weird sports like this. There, if you ever turn on ESPN at like some ungodly hour in the yes. day, some I've seen, uh, and I know I've talked about this before. There's been dead guy diving, which is you just completely just you just literally fall off of a thing and just have no control over you just act if you have no control over like any limbs or anything in your body. We've had that we've had slippery stairs. Mm-hmm. They just put Vaseline on stairs and people just fall down them. Yeah, that is such a hazard. It's very funny. There's also my favorite, which was when they had competitive rock, paper, scissors. Oof. That was competitive intense. rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> competitive arm wrestling. Oh, yeah. I remember the funniest thing, the funniest thing, one of the funniest things I've ever seen was competitive arm wrestling. The guy won, and his first shout out was just, I'm the winner. <laughs> That's all he'd say. All um, I can say about this is we used to do this in middle school, man. That is true. I, yeah. I used to be a big How I Made Your Mother fan. And, you know, I don't know if you guys are aware, they had like the slap bet. Where they, you know, they would bet on something and instead of, you know, betting money or anything, it would be a slap. And we used to, I used to do that in high school. I don't condone it. It was very stupid. I was a stupid we high school. We used to do stupid things in high school. Yeah. Remember open necking? 
Oh, yes. Oh, In Puerto Rico, we call that no. lambe queso. Yes. No, you don't remember. Okay, you might remember it, but not the name for it. Pretty much, it was very popular my freshman year. And you would try and surprise your friends by coming out of nowhere and, and, and a, palming them in the yeah. back of their neck. And it would be, you oh, know, yeah. it would be harmless fun in gym class, but then it would get really obnoxious. Like, I remember somebody almost knocked me down walking to class. Yeah, that, <laughs> was, yeah. What I did remember you guys that. get up to in high school. Hey, we were high schoolers, uh, man. <laughs> Especially your underclassmen years, man. Yeah, you you're just a young man, and you're like, yeah, it's like I don't know. And then some people get to college and they forget they're not freshmen in high school anymore. Yes, so. and they still do stupid stuff like that. Oh, that boy. is true. That is true. Well, Adios, Mio. Well, yes. I get body slammed on my first into a locker on my first day. Of oh, that's so that's so horrible. Oh, that's so horrible. Oh, terrible. Does yeah, that is hurt? very bad. Are you still? Are you good, Lana? I'm good. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. It was just like no, you I was just trying to walk to my class from lunch, and then all of a sudden, I just get body slammed into a wall. Wow! I, no, I was gonna Lana say. I was gonna say. Angry. Maybe you should enter the slap fighting league. Man, yeah. I think the shame of that. Sorry, Lana. I would be so ashamed. I honestly yeah. would legally change my name. <laughs> Legally. Being body slammed on the first day of middle yes. school. I would legally change my name, but I would b- probably pick a smarter name than this next guy we have coming up. Yes, oh, okay, you take it away. So with get story. this: <laughs> a man changes his name to get this ready fire exit, <laughs> and apparently he now thinks he's more famous than Elton John. Um, according to this man, he claims that he ends up getting recognized wherever he goes. Fire exit, formerly known as Deanna Wilson, spent 17 pounds on his new moniker, which he changed online at 1.30 a.m. at some point during the COVID lockdown. This is the best thing that anybody could ever do when you're quarantined. Plus, at this point, the audio and visual engineer felt as though he had, quote, nothing to lose. Plus, it turned out to be a cheaper to change his name during the pandemic. The 41-year-old father of five says it all started out as a joke between family members. However, now his unusual decision has brought him a fair bit of fame with his one-of-a-kind name quickly making headlines. Fire Exit, who lives in New Hampshire, said, and quote, nobody else has a name that is well-known, not even Elton John. People are always coming up to me at bars and parties. They know who I am, end quote. Well, I'm sorry to bust your bubble, Fire Exit, but I quite literally <laughs> did not hear of you until I Googled weird news to find stuff to help out with this. Clip. Exactly. However. Okay, so he's an is a fire name. <laughs> So if you live, so this is happening in England then. Yeah. Oh wow. So is his name Fire Exit Wilson or just Fire? It's Fire Exit. So exit Fire Exit, right? Mm-hmm. Like Fire's his first name and then Exit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mr. So he exit. changed okay. his last name. I, I Exit. It's just like it's kind of probably you know Brexit and everything. Brexit, Exit, Mr. Exit. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Like we've all done insanely wild things out of yes the we have we've i personally cannot even recount half the things due to staying safe however this has to be in the weirdest way possible i'm laughing at him but i'm also jealous <laughs> fire exit you want to call yourself fire exit? well maybe i'd pick something a little better than fire exit but it's just this hey, man hey you're a radio guy so it could it could be like on air DJ, DJ Fire Exit. <laughs> this is the equivalent of music director Jared one day legally changing his name to DJ Dr. DJ. Hey, it could happen. It could happen. Oh. It could happen. Yeah, that's Jared Tauber's DJ name. So and if you know we'll anything see. about Jared Tauber, that is very on brand for him. Mm-hmm. In fact, I may have just given him an idea. I'll, so, I'll support him all the way if he <laughs> do, it does change his name to DJ so Dr. Imagine, DJ. So imagine this guy is at somewhere, right? And there unfortunately is a fire. And someone just goes, go to the fire exit. And he's like, you hear in the background, hey, that's me. Yeah, he's, te- he's he would, definitely he telling me like that. that. He looks like that obnoxious so guy. Like, the name of fire exit would definitely be like, where's the fire exit? I'm right here. It's definitely illegal to scream his name. So maybe, it okay, maybe theater, you yeah. could start the trend. Like you could keep the trend going by calling yourself emergency exit. Mm. Oh, 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 boy. Emergency <laughs> guy. No, 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 no. Fire exit. This is my wife. Emergency. Exit. Oh, bro. Okay. They have five kids. They have five kids. Fire Wait, we, we got emergency exit. Uh, well, I don't know. Emergency ladder. Brexit. 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 Exit. Brexit. Exit. 
Oh man, there's so much to dig in, but hope, but wow. sadly, I mean, we're getting into the end of the show. We have to exit say. the show. We have to exit fire exit the show. Yeah. <laughs> or- Hopefully. Where is our fire exit? We only have one door. I hope you enjoyed listening to stupid people with us. And we're probably going to get off the air before we become one of those stupid people. Yeah. (laughs) Saying or doing said stupid things. Um, Hope you enjoyed. (laughs) Yeah. Hope you enjoyed this time with us. This was the morning bus here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. I'm Victor Meese Rosa. I was joined by JT Bethia, Tanner Price, and Lana Kapodakis, and Fire Exit now. So (laughs) shout out to Fire Exit here at UK. Next week, we'll have Leslie back with us. Hope you're doing good, sis. Yes, hope you're resting. Yeah. And Oh, one more thing. Yes. It is National Amanda. Say her last name for me. National Amanda Gadiosi Day. So happy birthday, Amanda <laughs> Gadiosi. She's, she's host of the Thursday morning bus. So yes, congratulations to you. She's going to be 23. Ooh. So congratulations. But anyways, we're going to go. So thank you so much for listening. This was 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. I'm Victor Maurice Rosa. And nos vemos. Bye. Bye.